penny saved is a penny earned. You probably heard that saying. Uh, recently, I went through a major life transition myself. And uh, after separating from my partner, I found myself at a crossroads, uh, both personally and in terms of, of my living situation. As a realtor, I always immersed, uh, been immersed in the world of real estate, but this was a moment where my professional expertise became deeply personal. Welcome to a Real Estate Wisdom Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Vishal Kapoor, a realtor with Century 21 I'm Miller. And uh, today we're going to talk about how we can save some money. Uh, life changes happen. Your personal expenses uh, might be rising. Uh, definitely we all know that how the inflation and high uh, rising cost of living affecting us deeply. And uh, in midst of that, like, you know, you want to manage your finances uh, to see how uh, you can survive or you can live the life the way you want. So in my case, I made the decision to move from house to a condo. Uh, now many call this uh, downsizing, but I prefer to think of it as right sizing. Uh, it's about defining the space uh, that fits your uh, current needs and lifestyle. For me, the condo is a perfect fit. Uh, it's more comfortable uh, than my, you know, double garage house or even a single garage detached house or even a townhouse for a single person. And uh, even with the echoes of my daughter, high-pitched squeals and her friend's teenage chaos, uh, just a few feet away in our close-knit quarters. So let's talk about the practical side of things. When you're moving from a house to a condo, especially in the wake of a separation or a divorce, uh, there are a few key considerations to keep in mind. First of all, you have to assess your needs. What do you really need in, in your new space? Uh, for me, it was uh, about finding a balance between comfort and functionality. Uh, I don't need the extra bedrooms or the large backyard anymore. Uh, what I needed was a space that felt safe, welcoming, and manageable. For me, like the kitchen uh, is the center because I love to cook. And I uh, have a good living space so I can entertain my friends uh, because definitely when you're going through that your best supporters are your friends and uh, they can come over we can chit chat and uh, enjoy like you know sometime uh, do the party because what's a life a bachelor life without uh, having uh, friends entertainment uh, well so that was important for me and uh, so i found the place uh, what was a difficult part was like it's embracing the change uh, to be honest um, it's easy to see downsizing as a step back, but really I found it's an opportunity to embrace a new chapter. Uh, for instance, I no longer have to uh, rake leaves or uh, shovel the snow or deal with the aftermath of raccoons raiding their garbage bins. Uh, and uh, during winter, my car is snuck in the underground garage, uh, so no windshield scraping for me. So you might be jealous, but uh, I'm enjoying. <laughs> well, uh, the other things which we I have to look into as a financial consideration. Moving to a condo can have financial benefits. And uh, typically, you'll find the utilities are lower, uh, maintenance is taken care of, and you might even have access to amenities that enhance your lifestyle without the added cost. For example, in my condo, uh, I have the patio area. I also have a little gym uh, because I love to go to gym. Um, that's a different thing. Like, you know, I like to go to the uh, LA Fitness uh, in uh, Misaga because we have more machines. At more so, like, you know, I get the chance to um, uh, meet other people. I'm a people person and I love that. Like, you know, when I meet other people, uh, discuss with them. I meet over there, like, you know, IT professionals, business owners, uh, mortgage agents, like, you know, and 
on and on, like the salespeople. And it's fascinating to hear their stories uh, when they share with me. And uh, one reason I love to go over there is because I have the fitness partner uh, who uh, work with me. And we always discuss, like, you know, and uh, how things going on. Like, you know, he's my good friend. And also, uh, he always asking that questions, like, you know, how the condo life is treating you because you just moved from a big uh, house, like, you know, just 3,000 square feet house, and now you're living in the 700 square feet uh, condo. Uh, how that's affect you? Well, to tell you, dude, I'm loving it. I uh, have a balcony where I can see the beautiful sunset, and uh, I don't have to worry about that. I just lock it, and if I'm traveling, I can just lock it and go. Um, also, the consideration about, like, you know, how the security concerns are happening and other things are happening, I, I look into a blessing in disguise uh, in that sense. Well, the, when you're looking into condo, you're also looking into community and location. For me, like, you know, uh, walking to the grocery store uh, and having access to uh, a highway was an important factor because I'm always moving. So... Condo often offer a sense of community and a um, prime location, uh, it's, a, it's a key. Uh, in my case, I'm surrounded by parks, uh, trails, and uh, uh, I have the Walmart across my street. And I can just walk over there, Real Canadian Superstore, uh, LCBO, um, and uh, other amenities out there which I can access, right? So it's different kind of uh, richness, and I will say that doesn't come with the square footage. Yep, that's how I take it. Like, you know, I feel <clears throat> more uh, uh, blessed, and I feel like and it's, things are more accessible, like somebody else is managing for me. Um, well, when we're moving from bigger house to smaller place, the biggest challenge I had, and a lot of people probably have that, is letting go. Uh, and this is a big one. Uh, downsizing means uh, decluttering. I had to let go of furnitures and items that no longer serve my new life. Actually, uh, to be honest, what I did, I even didn't take any uh, thing, any furniture uh, from my old house. And uh, whatever I can sell, I can sell. Uh, whatever my ex wanted it, like, you know, she kept it. Uh, and uh, we did things immaculately, so it was much easier for me. Not not in many cases cases that will happen. Uh, but even like you know, generally, if you're downsizing, that's one thing I will recommend because a bigger house furniture won't fit in the condo properly, right? Um, so I decided like and now get start fresh, um, and uh, you know, do I have to let go like a lot of things like which uh, I. Uh, was near and dear to me, but now I don't need it, right? Uh, it was not serving my life purpose. So so it was a process, honestly, but it was also liberating. Uh, I sold some pieces, uh, donated others, and kept only what I truly loved. So uh, utensils are one of them. Yeah, you'll be surprised. Like, I love utensils. <clears throat> Now, when I'm talking about it, talking about the emotional journey, and I can see that, like, you know, even the seniors who's downsizing, uh, I'm not at that age, but, like, I think as it's my, seems like an early retirement to me. Uh, most of the time, it's not just about the physical move. Uh, there's an emotional journey, too. And uh, you're not just leaving a house. Uh, you're leaving memories and a past life behind. And it's important to acknowledge and honor those feelings uh, as you transition to your new home. And I took my time, you know, I, you know, sit on it, like, you know, I meditate. Uh, I regularly could do gym because if you have a fit body, fit mind, you can think better, you can process things better, and you can make better decisions. Uh, I volunteer my time, which I was al always doing anyway, uh, to help others uh, if they can learn from uh, me or my mistakes or uh, my uh, wisdom. And that's, that's what I'm doing. And to give myself some uh, time 
to process uh, my emotions. It's not like, you know, I always like in the positive, uh, which most people see me. Uh, I also go to the uh, emotional roller coaster uh, many times. Uh, but the key is like, you know, I make myself resilience to deal with those emotions and recognize like, you know, how, uh, what I have to do now, because past is past, past is past. And we just have to focus on my current scenario so I have a better future. Uh, now, let's shift the gear and talk about market trends uh, that can impact uh, this decision. So, according to the Canadian Housing Market Outlook, we are seeing a trend where people are looking for properties that fit their current lifestyle. Uh, which often means smaller, more manageable space. Um, this is reflected in the steady consumer confidence in homeownership as an investment, despite the challenges of affordability. So we have seen that the reason I'm talking today about this is <clears throat> I'm seeing a lot of people are struggling. Um, you know, mortgages are, in some cases, got double and triple uh, what you're paying now. And uh, where your income is not doubled or triple. So how are people managing it? And a lot of times, like, you know, we struggle in keeping that status quo because we want that status quo uh, because more it's about like the pride and also looking into that, that we're losing something and nobody wants to lose. But in these situations, like a being practical rather than putting yourself like, you know, uh, pressure and stress, uh, my recommendation is like, you know, and that's what the decision I made. It's not like I don't have the house. I have the, uh, another uh, property, which um, I rented out because it was uh, too big for me. And uh, so that was taken care of because I'm getting rent paid for that property and that's financial uh, obligations are met. And uh, I bought like something which I can afford or manage or it's not like, you know, I'm just doing a T to T. I need to have some gap because uh, in realtor business, like, you know, to be honest is uh, not every day is same. Um, we get paid after closing sometimes. And most of the time closing happens 60, 90, 120 days. And so we have to plan accordingly. So uh, that's what I say, like, you know, to people, um, not looking into a budget when you just struggling, uh, keep looking at your budget and keep managing your expenses. And uh, most of the time, like we have like a lot of things which we do, like for example, like eating out. Um, and uh, I love this guy, like the young kid I met. And he was just explaining to me like, uh, let's say you typically spend $5 every day on a fancy coffee from a uh, Starbucks, uh, or gourmet cafe because you love it. Uh, over the course of month, assuming 30 days, uh, this habit would cost you $150. In some cases, you need two coffees in a day. So that's double, like it's $300. Looks like an amount is like a small, right? And now suppose you decide to make your coffee at home instead, uh, buying of good quality coffee beans, um, like can, can be like $10 to $20 and provide you with around 30 to 40 servings. And in the cost of milk and sugar, if you add on that, and your homemade coffee might come to around 50 cents per cup. So $5 to 50 cents, like you know, $4.50 saving. And that over a month, that's a saving of $135. So it's a huge amount. And when you add up those ones, um, I will say, you know, this is going to be approximately a thousand bucks in a year, more than that actually, uh, what you're able to save. So it's like about changing a little habits and which can make you uh, save on those, um, you know, every penny, uh, uh, which is like earning um, other penny, right? So there, there's only two options. You have a limited time and especially the professionals, they don't have a time to do even the side hustle. Um, 
However, like a lot of people these days are doing a side hustles, like uh, selling things on Amazon, for example, uh, doing side hustles like uh, writing a blog or uh, consulting online or teaching online um, and sharing their expertise. So there's different ways, like a different, that's a different topic at all. Like, you know, we, today we're talking about like, talking about like, and how you can save rather than uh, how you can earn more. Uh, I always recommend like, you know, if you can earn more, that's great. Like and do the investments which can uh, give you a positive cash flow um, and keep on looking those things as well. But saving is the base, big aspect. I uh, was fortunate enough to uh, grow, um, I got my upbringing was like, you know, it's, it was like pretty basic. If you have a dollar in your hand, uh, we've been taught like, you know, save 25 cents, at least, at least 25 cents. And, and over the period of time, like at that 25 cents which you saving, it can accumulate a big chunk of money. So, you know, it's, if you can take that tip and if you can utilize that, that's great. Um, but that's, that's the, uh, unfortunately, that's the reality now because the affordability challenges are happening. And uh, uh, so I will say like for those of you considering a similar move, uh, remember that right sizing is a deeply uh, personal decision. Uh, it's about what feels right for you uh, at this moment in your life. And as a realtor, I can tell you that uh, there's a market for every type of home. Whether you are selling a spacious house or looking to buy a cozy condo. And don't get worried about like, you know, so much like, you know, challenges happening in the market. Most of these market effect is short term. Nothing is like a long term. So let's say you bought a property today which you found like, hey, I bought it on the wrong time, uh, it's too expensive, uh, and the price has gone down. Don't worry about that. Because the time, like if, you, if you're a flipper, that's a different story. If you're an investor, that's a different story. But if you're going to live there, and you're going to sell it for, let's say, four or five years, most people like, you know, if they start living in this stage of life, they're probably not selling for five years, like you know, if you're above 40, I will say. Uh, you're probably thinking of like, you know, spending your life over there uh, until the retirement or until the kids are gone and you're downsizing. That's the, that's the other interesting thing. Like in a lot of people uh, in my age, like, you know, their kids have moved out uh, and go to university and uh, now they're going to start their own life, right? And now you're sitting in a 3,000, 4,000 square feet house uh, with all the maintenance going on, um, your physically it's not possible for to uh, keep it maintained. It makes more sense to me, like in having some cash flow uh, on the side and enjoy it. That's cash flow you can use it for travel or whatever lifestyle you want to achieve. But having a big house is not necessarily the things uh, which you want to, you, which which might want to do, right? So consider it consolidate your debts uh, is the word. Like, you know, you can reduce your debts uh, on that part. And that's how you do. But it's a big decision. And this is the huge decision. It's a change of mindset, uh, I will say. Right? You change your mindset and things can be better. I say there's always a solution for every problem. And most of the time, the solution is within us. Uh, it's nowhere else. You can look around, you can find that, but we know the answer. Uh, but based on pressure from the society, friends, your circle, uh, community, uh, in Hindi we say like a lok kya kahenge, means like what people will say. Uh, and don't worry about those people. <laughs> they, they're not going to uh, take care of your finances. Uh, they're not going to uh, give you money to pay your mortgages. Uh, you have to deal with it. So rather than showing off and doing those lifestyle which you cannot do, um, buying those fancy cards, even you cannot afford it, and now you have to downside because now you don't have a fancy car and people will think, oh my God, what happened? He's broke now. 
don't worry about that. Look into what's right for you and what you can manage, right? Uh, so I will say thank you for joining me uh, on the Real Estate Wisdom Podcast. If you are navigating a major life change and considering a move, uh, I hope my story has provided some insight and encouragement. Remember, it's not about downsizing. It's about right-sizing your life. So, until next time, take care and happy house hunting, or should I say condo hunting. Bye for now. In this podcast is for informational purpose only and should not be considered as financial or investment advice. Consult with your professional before making any real estate decisions.